Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Best Wrestler! That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcast should have a theme song. Podcast should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Miss Wrestler. Oh, yeah. We're not going to use that one. That was great. I love that. That was a wonderful Hulk Hogan impression. Did I do it right? <laughs> Good job. Thanks. Hal, who are these other two podcasters in our room? Mark, you're not my only podcast. Who are spouse. these people? I have uh, another podcast on the Max Fun Met- Network. What, I have another what, podcast what? that. Oh, look, I can't talk. I'm too excited. That's okay. I'm excited too. Look, we're joined by Daniel Radford and Lindsay Kelk, my co-hosts from Maximum Fun Bites. Hello, ladies. This is such Hello. a treat. Hello. Hello. It's so great to have I you. I feel like I rolled up in y'all's like uh, very cozy living room. Like we've all got on our onesies. <laughs> yeah. 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 Can we I get you uh, bit... some M and M's or anything? That's what I, that's I, what I, I have on. Some on. M&Ms. I feel like Danielle and I just knocked on your door like a couple of urchins, <laughs> and we said, "Please, Hal and Mark." We have some more, uh, and here we are. (laughs) I am so glad you are here because this topic is going to be so fun, and this is a topic I know very little about, but I know that you, and to some extent Hal, but really Danielle and Lindsay (laughs) are the absolute experts to have on about this, and this is such a fun topic. I'm sure you've gone over this on your show before, but for those who have not crossed over before between Tights and Fights and We Got This, by the way, the Tights and Fights sticker from last year hands down my favorite one the more women's matches with the uh, the belt wrapped around the matches such a great sticker <laughs> but what drew you initially to wrestling have you been lifelong fans how uh what drew you in and when oh um what drew me in sadly i always feel bad telling this story because i feel like i'm letting women down um, well i feel bad asking the question then yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was a big brother. I, I was, yeah. I am a little sister. Um, and my brother is five years older and like many little sisters and younger siblings in general, just wanted to do anything my big brother did mm-hmm. to make him like me, <laughs> which was really <laughs> just an uphill struggle. Um, so yeah, so of late eighties, early nineties, he really got into wrestling and I followed suit. It's the most fun thing. When you're yeah. like nine and believe it. And especially yeah. in a little northern English mining town, it is so foreign and exotic, even compared to the wrestling we had. It was so <laughs> wild. Uh, so that's how they got me. And I, <laughs> I dropped out for a few years and then I came back and they've not been able to shake me since. <laughs> and you, you believed as a nine year old, you didn't know that this was sports entertainment. This was professional athletes each trying to actually win so i think i thought of it like a soap opera because i Mm kind of came in around the rick flair randy savage miss elizabeth stuff oh yeah means so much (laughs) (laughs) right exactly and i also my mom was a big fan of like dallas and as we said in england dynasty uh so i think it was there in my brain I was like, this is very close to what I'm watching past my bedtime. It's so fun. As a yeah. nine-year-old, yeah, it's like, oh, you're watching the boring version of this awesome thing that I love. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, no one's getting yeeted over a top <laughs> rope. <laughs> yes, he's getting shot off a balcony, but like, whatever. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was the two things went hand in hand for me, for sure. I love that. What about you, Danielle? Um, yeah, so I, uh, started in the attitude era i was in school uh, i believe what happened was that i was in drama club and then uh all of the other folks in drama club started watching wrestling and then all of my best friends who were also <laughs> yeah. in drama club with me started watching wrestling and i was like well the, what's all this then uh, and so i started watching it and i remember exactly like it was the episode where um, the Undertaker had Stephanie McMahon up on his not across. And I saw that and I was like, 
this sh- it's like Mortal Kombat, and I'm a huge like Mortal Kombat fighting game fan, mm-hmm. but especially like I love Mortal Kombat. Um, and and if you know, I was like a, a young girl, so obviously I loved horror because young girls love horror. Uh, sure. And so all of those elements like got me, and I was like hooked immediately. And comic books and all that stuff, so it like hit really deeply in a lot of the very nerd uh, parts of me. And yeah, I watched it, and then there was a period where I took a break because a lot of it just kind of didn't have a lot of the stuff that I liked about it. Uh, and then I wound up coming back and and just like uh Lindsay, they have not been able to shake me and lord knows they have tried um yeah, they do they shake a lot of people they pick yeah. them up they shake them they spin them around yes yep, yeah. yep, yep. they throw them they, mm-hmm. they do all those things and more lots like of whips, crazy wild lots of whipping. world of professional yeah. wrestling and hal what about you I mean, I, I'm the right age that when I was like six, seven years old, mm-hmm. I was six years old when Hulk Hogan beat the Iron Sheik in Madison Square Garden to win the world championship. Mm-hmm. And then wrestling at that point, Vince McMahon takes WWF, takes over a bunch of indie or not indie, uh, uh, regional promotions at the time. And all of a sudden there are these larger than life characters that are everywhere and then follows WrestleMania, rock and wrestling before that. And I just, I was the right age to get picked up by it. I went away from it probably a little bit in the early nineties and then picked it mm-hmm. back up in high school during Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and Diesel and Razor Ramon dropped it again and came back in 2000 uh, because of a video game, because of the original SmackDown mm-hmm. for yeah. PlayStation. And just, I saw some, I was like, Oh, I know the Undertaker. There were a couple people who I knew. I was like, Hunter Hearst Helmsley is Triple H now. And just ever since it makes then, sense as is yeah. there at the initial. <laughs> <He's short. laughs> and, and ever since that, I've gotten into it more and more and more. And just there's a weird transition that's happened. And we talk about it on our show, which mm-hmm. is a like fun. I think we've heard more often than not that there are people who don't really follow wrestling that will listen to the show and maybe get into it because of that. Cause it's all we make it as accessible as possible, but we're in this age now where. Fans are just as interested in the story behind the story and what's yes. going on backstage and then how that plays out in front of them. So wrestling is kind of like real estate and that it's oddly behind the times, but also on the like the bleeding edge <laughs> of mm-hmm. what it needs to survive and grow. So Tout. yeah, just it's still great. I love well, I, I love that I love that tout, idea tout, that it's tout, tout. Tout, tout. Sorry. Yeah, touted out. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, a yeah. bleeding what? edge, right in front and so far behind. Yeah. And, and a certain, uh, sorry, they, uh, this is not our podcast. Um, There was a moment where <laughs> the WWE tried to do what was basically like a mid-2000s version of TikTok, if you go back yeah. and think about it, called yeah. really? Touts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we all make fun of it, but uh, TikTok is huge now, so they were way they ahead They were the right curve. there, yeah. and they yeah. moved up. Yeah. <laughs> and somehow but this is if this is that not the story of professional wrestling if nothing else yes. they were right there and then they f***ed it up uh and now they're scrabbling to catch back up to where they were already in front of everyone else that is yeah. truly <laughs> the wwe it every mentioned. time yeah. okay so again i'm the one that is the least versed in wrestling here so i will simply try to spend much of my i, I will I will leave it to the experts to do the adjudicating most of it. I will simply try to facilitate here and ask a few questions. So my first question is, how do we want to approach this? Do we want to try to pull one from each of the eras and then have a Royal Rumble at the end? Do we want to, how do you want to do this? Do you want to each throw out potential contenders? What are your thoughts on how we should approach this? This is, I feel like this is a big one because (laughs) Your whole show is about this topic. It is, and it's such a contentious topic because it's so sure. subjective. It's so Absolutely. subjective. Well, that's how we, that's what we do here yeah. on We Got This. We objectively answer subjective questions. But you're asking very subjective people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think, that's what I makes it fun. What, I think what we can agree on is mm. that the best wrestler, whoever they are, is an immaculate storyteller both in and out of the ring. So they can tell a story with their body and over mm-hmm. the course of a match, but they're also spectacular on the microphone and, and able to keep the attention of people. There are wrestlers who will not be like, there's a woman named Jade Cargill who was in AEW and is now in WWE. Jennifer mm-hmm. watched the Royal Rumble with me this year, the women's rumble only. Mm-hmm. I was able to get her to watch for that long. And when Jade Cargill appeared on screen without her saying anything. Jennifer took notice. It was like, oh, who is that? 
was immediately interested in her, immediately interested in Bianca Belair, who is one of the best wrestlers in the world today. And when mm. they met each other in the ring, Jennifer was like, I would watch again to see those two wrestle. And I think the person who's going to be the best is going to have that quality to them. Yeah. Do you agree, Lindsay? Yeah, Daniel? absolutely. I, I definitely do. I think it, it is such a hard thing to define because like we said, it is so subjective, but there are absolutely qualities that help someone rise above to be the best wrestler you almost have to be more than the best wrestler because there are a lot of best wrestlers and that changes every other week but you have to be something that transcends what we're asking you to be even Mm -hmm. i think to win that prize and maybe you're not the best technical person or you're not the best speaker but i think like Hal says, you have to be able to tell a story. Yeah, and definitely you have to have that uh, a non-watcher will watch because you are so captivating on screen 100%. I also think that there is something to be said about longevity, and I don't necessarily mean people who are like, we'll do this until they like crumble to dust in the middle of the ring, but as much as someone being able to, (laughs) as much as someone being able to say like, uh, or you you can look at someone and say, I liked this era of them, but I also liked this era of them. Mm -hmm. Like someone who was able to they're not static the entire time they know when it's time to like shake it up and like try something different instead of being stuck doing the same like thing that gets kind of boring Mm -hmm. an example that i would say of someone who is incredibly talented inside of the ring is very very good on the mic but like it's time for a shakeup would be charlotte flair charlotte flair fantastic in the ring captivating you want to watch her you want to look at her but she's Mm -hmm. been like doing i'm lady rick flair her whole career basically and uh so for that that would be one of those things that for me would be like oh if she had another era instead of it just being i'm the same character but sometimes i'm nicer and sometimes i'm meaner then that would be something that would put her in contention sometimes i'm a psycho with a socko and sometimes i'm a groovy hippie exactly that extreme like like mix it up mix your characters up that dramatically I think the shift is what's important, right? Like when Hal mentioned Mm -hmm. Bianca Belair uh, just Mm -hmm. a while ago, I was like, oh, Bianca is going to be in this conversation. Right. But she's Mm -hmm. not in this conversation yet. And I don't even think it's because she hasn't been doing it as long as some of the others. It's because we've only seen so many colors in her paint box. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's Yeah. And again, it's it's not about time spent in the ring necessarily it's about showing us what you have and i know she has more which is why i wouldn't throw her name into the ring as opposed Mm to a becky lynch yeah 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 for example great there's one person i can think of who really only had one color in the paint box but it Mm -hmm. just was the right color for them and was better on the mic than people give him credit for and one of the best in the ring ever and that's ricky the dragon steamboat who Mm. was always a good guy just always Mm -hmm. never could work heel because nobody believed it he was just too like you could just tell he's a good guy and i think Mm -hmm. you just want to cheer for him and i i don't know that he's the best he's somebody that you could put in the conversation but that's the like that would be the thing rick flair who probably worked him better and more than anyone would Mm -hmm. say is like he never worked heel he couldn't work heel he just right. couldn't do it. So it kind of gets in his way, but also it's kind of the strength of him. But I agree, mm. especially now, modern wrestlers yes. need to be able to show variety. And the best around, I think some of the people we're going to talk about have shown a lot of variety, too. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Do you think, would you like to focus on, because I'm not going to lie, most of these names that you're mentioning, I have never heard yeah. in my life. <laughs> Fair. Do you want to focus on, because all you said was best wrestler. Yeah, I don't know. Do you mean, are we talking best wrestler of all time? Or are we talking about best current wrestler? I thought of all time. That was what, yeah, that's I was what thinking. On okay, timing. good. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank God. Because for a second, I was like, oh, no, they're talking about a bunch of people I've never heard of. <laughs> no, <laughs> the assignment, best current yeah. wrestler. Yeah, you know Paul I, London, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think the, my, the best wrestlers are the ones that have been on this podcast. Yeah, that's oh, those yeah. are my favorites. Yeah. So it's uh, Simon Gotch think, or yep, Simon Gotch. <laughs> well, let me let me pitch this then. I will pitch another idea to you. And if I get some matchups wrong based on different eras, please let me know. Is there a world where instead of just going through the eras and talking about the individual wrestlers, should we set up some matches and do some binary battles of the big guns, pit them against one another, and then at the end, whoever our victors are, that's who we'll take a look at. 
I think it could be fun. We're talking wrestling here. Might be fun to have some binary matches. We could even throw some tag teams that may not even, maybe weren't even real tag team yeah. duos. <laughs> or they I were guess. tag team duos because one of the only eras that I watched, I watched Kane and X-Pac were my <laughs> jam watching the two of those guys. Sadly, Kane has turned out to be the guy that ruined my hometown, but we don't talk about <laughs> politics Boo. on this show. As long as we're okay with mixed match challenge rules, right? Because there's, there's oh, going to yeah. be, this yes. is not an all dude conversation, uh, yeah. blessedly these days. Yeah, wonderful. So I think as long as, you know, rescue dogs rock and we can have a lady challenging a gent without Vince McMahon coming for us, he can't come for anyone now. Uh, oh. then, uh, <laughs> I think, yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Great. I think you just told me I get to role play matches. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. And this is again, I, I don't know a ton about this. So if we were putting together, I will ask you this since you're the one that mentioned it, Lindsay. I, yeah, this is so embarrassing. I know China. That's it as far as female wrestlers go. But if you were going to, if you had one person to put in as tribute, uh, one female wrestler, and I'll ask you this as well, uh, Danielle, uh, for a second round, Lindsay, uh, what man would you put her against? Uh, who would you, who would you pick and what battle would you, uh, who would you want to see her get compared to? China? Oh, wow. That is tough. Um, you want me to compare China to someone? No, 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 no. Pick my own. Okay. Sorry. Whoever, whoever you want to volunteer as tribute. I mean, I, I feel like I only have one option. I already mentioned her and it is, it's the man. Um, it is Becky Lynch. I think she is an all time talent in the ring on the mic. She's evolved. She's shown different sides of herself. She can wrestle anyone. She can talk to anyone about anything. And she made, uh, she made an event at WrestleMania, you know, uh, against the nightmare that is Ronda Rousey and Live to Tell the Tale with both her arms still intact. So I think that's impressive. Obviously, Charlotte was in there too. Shout out to Charlotte. But Becky Lynch to me has to be in the conversation of best all time. Like the Serena Williams, right? You know, it's not, oh, yeah. she's the best women's wrestler. Like she's one of the best we've had that does this. She's playing currently. She's currently in the game. Yes. Uh, oh, Becky yeah. is all in. We love Becky. She has her first Elimination Chamber match coming up very soon, which is Ooh. one of the few things she hasn't done, which I'm very excited to see because she can be funny. She can be wacky, but she can also be brutal. And I am excited to see that side of her. Mother of one. <laughs> Mother of one. <laughs> brutal. Mother of one. Yeah. And ready to kill. So I for sure want Becky in the conversation. Well, who would you who? pit Becky against then? Well, if Mark, using maybe? those using those adjectives, uh, the adjectives that you used that stuck with me the best were the ones that seemed the most fun juxtaposition are brutal and funny. How about so that? Sounds Mark? like she's <laughs> yeah. What if we throw out a series of wrestlers and then we build a card out of that rather than who okay. faces off with who now? Because then we can provide you, and I think there are people who you know as well. Who sure. like, you were there for? I would say probably the one of the best analogs of the man is maybe Stone Cold Steve Austin in terms of mm. at their hottest, at their mm-hmm. most popular, they were just the number one name. You know, she was the number one name in wrestling. Period. Yeah, and she could do it in the ring, and she could do it on the mic, and she came from. I think what's interesting about Becky is she came from a really kind of weird steampunk kind of gimmick <laughs> where she just wore goggles. I mean, and, she started out as a leprechaun. Yeah. Yeah, she, she started did. out Probably doing what? Irish dancing. Yeah, she did. She did a lower yeah, dance. She's, she's a Irish. Leprechaun? She's Irish, oh, okay. and they had her come out yeah. in very green gear with some very bad tan, uh, yeah. doing Irish dancing on the ramp, and it was just oh, wearing me lucky charms. You know, it was not pretty. And uh, she went through that to the steampunk, which got some traction. God, didn't mm-hmm. she do uh, limericks? Didn't wasn't there a limerick oh, phase? Oh God, I don't want to yeah. think about it. Well, it was so a lot upsetting. of dad jokes too. She had her pun yeah. phase because she loves puns in real life, so she would do puns. She and it does was like, like a pun. Somehow, this does feel like the least problematic ethnic stereotype that the WWE has put out there. It could be. It You're could correct. be. Somehow, somehow, it's still low on that particular <laughs> ranking. <laughs> yeah, and yet yeah. still pretty offensive. But yeah, like one thing I think wrestling fans like to talk about. I know I've had conversations about it. I'm, I, I'm sure we've talked about it. The three of us also is like at their highest, who is the biggest star ever in wrestling. And in terms of drawing crowds and getting ratings, Stone Cold might be at the top of that list. He benefited yeah. from a roster that included The Rock and The Undertaker and, and a lot of other people who you could throw out there. But 
you know, all, Becky Lynch, same thing. She became just this huge draw and they, mm-hmm. they get compared to one another. Yeah. Yeah. I want to throw in another name mm-hmm. of someone who, uh, did it for a long time, took a break, but, uh, we've seen different versions of them. They've done face. They've done funny. They've done brutal. They've done everything. And now they've kind of settled into, um, the dad who gives us lots of very talented women on NXT. I'm talking about Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Shawn Michaels. Um, oh, yeah. I think he's got to be in the conversation. When he was an active wrestler, he is one of the best to do it. Like he yeah. is technically uh, speaking, you mean? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like uh, incredibly talented side of the ring. Um, can move like nobody's business. Uh, I won't get into boring sh- like work rate because who cares? Um, but he makes everything feel real and feel special. He is also fantastic on the mic. He was also incredibly handsome. He was in like an issue of Playgirl back when, you know, like they weren't really <laughs> having wrestlers. There was a, a kind of a down point, like a dip when a lot of like him and, and a lot of other wrestlers started to emerge, like the younger wrestlers as, you know, a lot of like the Randy Savages and your Hulk Hogan's and, and mm-hmm. that kind of thing was starting to go into decline. You had this new era uh, represented by like the click who now can run everything um <laughs> he and he's uh, again he, he's also one who's very brutal he has got great fantastic showmanship showmanship through the roof yeah. and he has shown that he can be incredibly funny like he completely turned his character on its head and became basically like a wrestling big old like goofball like the wrestling version of a uh, teenage boy in a wacky comedy about teenage boys. Like he did Porky, mm-hmm. but make it wrestling. Um, and that's kind of what DX was. And then he left, uh, cause he was sad. He said that his smile was gone. I get it. Yeah. But, uh, and then he came back and he's one of the few people who were able to take that long of a break and then come back when they were older, having been gone for a significant number of years and still killing it. How dare. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a thing. He's also the only wrestler. And I remember this. I saw this one back in the day. Yeah. One of the few, you know, outside of my era of watching moments. In 2008, he made me cry. And mm-hmm. no wrestler has ever actually mm-hmm. made me. And in an unscripted moment, he, like, just of showing pure deference to an inarguable goat that we will talk about, Ric Flair. Yeah. Uh, his, I'm sorry, I love you before his final move. Yep. That got me. Devastating. Right? Yeah. That moment is devastating. <laughs> it is, be- it is a beautiful moment in sports entertainment. So, yeah. So, Mark, <laughs> your big oh, bunch of Jessies. That's yeah. what yeah. we would say back in England. Your big bunch yeah. of wimps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. You, Guess what? You know, cry. I cry at everything. Absolutely every no yeah. feelings. Nothing. Watched it stone cold. Come on. Nothing. Really? Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you. Death I mean, kick. I can appreciate oh, it. Come but on. Come it's like on. The, no. It's like, no, it's like when the you know why I can't forgive yeller. Sean. You know yeah. why I can't forgive Sean. And I, I don't want to yeah. do it. I don't want we'll to bring it that. in yet. Exactly. I know. We'll get into but you it, know why he, I can't. Uh, that, because that's going to get real. Uh, that's going to get a hit. That's something I don't think we've actually <laughs> litigated on our podcast before. So let's go. That's true. We'll, <laughs> yes. we'll do it here. Yeah, uh, Mark, I'm so glad yeah. that you know that moment because it is a perfect yeah. example of the effect wrestling can have on people. I mean, it's beautiful. A wrestler named Naomi came back at the Royal Rumble and I was listening to it as I was driving mm-hmm. home and I heard her music hit. I teared up just as I was excited that she like I knew what that moment meant to her and meant to the crowd. Yeah. But Shawn Michaels is a very interesting guy. He loses his smile, comes back. Then he injures his back at WrestleMania in 1998. And that is the end of his career, we think. He appears a couple times on TV because he's still involved in the company and he's the commissioner for a while, the special guest referee when they need him. But in 2002, when he's ready to come back, the feud is with Triple H, his best friend, Mm -hmm. and it's an unsanctioned match because he's not medically cleared to wrestle. That's the story behind it. And Mm -hmm. it is a gut-wrenching match to watch him because you don't know four years removed from his last match and knowing that he, you know, they're playing up the idea that he could be hurt and, you know, like he could be paralyzed or worse from this match. But the performance he puts on is like every example of what is right about him and his ability to manipulate an audience in a good way. And everybody who is a performer, like that's part of the job is to manipulate the audience into crying, into laughing, into clapping, booing, whatever yeah. it is. Into giving is. them our money. 
Yeah. Yes. Just yes. manipulate. Yes. I mean, it's, <laughs> it is pure theater. It's use oh, everything yeah. at yeah. your disposal to manipulate an audience. It's theater yeah. in the round. 100%. Yeah. Now, Lindsay, I want to ask you, you mentioned, I'm, are you talking about the Montreal screw job? Is that what you're talking about? And why <laughs> you don't want Michael? I'm talking about the Montreal okay. screw job. And, and you have you know never, what? how have you never litigated this on your show? <laughs> I don't know wrestling like and I know the Montreal screw job. We touch it and we leave it alone. It's like, it's a hot stove and we lunch. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like, I, like, I, I touched have, it one time. Look, Danielle I have hates what, Brett Hart. Danielle many hates people have. Do you really? Brett Brett Hart. Hart. I, look, I know I'm wrong <laughs> before everyone tells me I understand. I also don't, I don't, look, I don't hate Bret Hart in as much as I, I think a lot of his work to me, he feels like a human snooze button. He is a rest hold. It is fine. I understand what everyone <laughs> loves him. He's technically incredibly talented. I literally just killed Lindsay um, yeah. in front of everyone. Me um, he's incredibly talented. I look, I love the Bret Hart who does nothing but find a reason why Goldberg's always wrong. That's great. I that love man that is forever. nothing if not walk in spite these days and i also <laughs> love that about him like he will go yeah. out of his way at any possible opportunity to remind everyone how much of an asshole goldberg is and how much he hates him which is why he has to stay in contention for me because he never dropped the gimmick <laughs> Bret Hart. Bret Hart keeps literally yeah. Bret Hart is constantly given <laughs> and i will love him for that well he was my first wrestling love and i was yeah. not gonna I'm not going to go to bat for him and say he is the best of all time. I think he's one of the best of all time. Yeah. Just because of his influence. And, mm -hmm. and I, I get what you're saying, but nine year old Lindsay saw something through that TV that was like, <laughs> what is this? Give me more. Um, yeah. and you know, I, I love that man. I love that Canadian. <laughs> I love him so much. Well, I think we know one of our matchups after we build our card. I think we know what one of our matchups is going to be. And oh, I'm pretty sure. Becky Lynch who... versus Bret Hart. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like it's going to be Danielle versus Lindsay. Really? I think that's what this is. Yeah. I want to We would just hug in the, the middle of the ring and cry. And then yeah, we would just cry and hug. Have you met us? <laughs> just to balance it out because we have an anti and a pro Bret. I'm also pro Bret Hart. I think he gets a tough rap. Some of his mic stuff was great. Some of it wasn't. He was a really good heel. I remember him as a heel as a kid mm -hmm. and as the, the mm -hmm. half of the Hart Foundation. But he carried the company at a time yes. that's sort of like one of the lulls when they mm -hmm. were doing like wrestling plumbers and wrestling trash men. And uh, here's yeah. a minotaur, uh, a literal <laughs> minotaur in the ring. Mantar. Wait, and Mantar? was it? There was a real Mantar. minotaur in the he ring? He wore a big bullhead Man. and he wrestled with it on, which he should get some sort of uh, hazard pay for that. Yeah. But Bret Hart is also maybe one of the best technical wrestlers ever. And That's the true. number yeah. of people he had a great match with. I mean, he helped make Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yes. Certainly he and Shawn Michaels elevated each other and they'll mm -hmm. never, they'll always be tied to one another. Just like they're like mm. the Magic Johnson and Larry Bird yeah. of professional wrestling. Including uh, and the even, copious amounts of talking. Yeah. <laughs> and even Rowdy Roddy Piper, like, you know, like had a great match with him. Like just. He has just a really, his resume is impeccable. Yeah. I mean, he's a yeah. taciturn man. He, yeah. He's not just a boy <laughs> into a showy man, but he is no less passionate for it. I think that yeah. is the thing for me is he is, he's a little stoic, especially when mm -hmm. you compare him against someone like Sean, which like Hal says, you can't not because they are so yeah. entwined. You <laughs> have to. And if you look at how showy and over the top, Sean is, you know, the white leathers, the heartbreak kid, the big hair, sensational Sherry. And then you've got Brett just stood glowering in a corner. I yeah. love a glowerer. I'm a romance novelist. <laughs> like, there's nothing I love more than a big, dark haired man who's going to stand in a corner and look threatening. That's literally my trade. Uh, Put that man in a doorway it. stacked. Right, right. He's a fine living out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me I, I'll, let me throw another one out there. Since you mentioned a big, dark haired man standing there looking menacing. Mm. Let's talk about the one. Look, not that titles mean anything as far as who is the best wrestler, because it is sports entertainment and it is predetermined. But 21 wins. It's tough to keep him off of the podium at the end of this. And I'm talking about The Undertaker. Yeah. Who has spanned multiple eras. 
in the ring who my mom actually, when she was single, got set up on a date with that never happened because he was in Knoxville. But I would have loved for my mom to go on a date with The Undertaker. I mean, come on. How cool is that? Imagine he tucks you in at night and says, rest in peace. Come on. Uh, And then turns uh, off the urn by your bed. And then he gets your mom's name tattooed on him. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) On his throat. Right. His throat. (laughs) Are there any wrestlers that we want to put into the mix from any of that? Any of I think of The Undertaker. I think of the original. How you mentioned the video game Smackdown. I remember when I was a kid, there was an arcade full-size cabinet WWF game. And it had all of the huge wrestlers of the golden age. Mm-hmm. Uh, or golden era on that cabinet. Who do we want to take through from the golden era yeah. into our card? I think the Undertaker's got to be on the list. I agree. Cause that, that's hard. Cause a lot of them are, were a lot of flash and no substance. Sure. Unfortunately, Not a lot great of them wrestlers. hot garbage in the ring. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, what about Macho Man Randy Savage? And that's what I was going to say. That's literally yeah. the only my boy, one. <laughs> my boy Randy taken from us too soon. Yeah, I mean, Hogan Hogan and Flair, Flair is definitely the better wrestler. Hogan is undeniably had a bigger impact on wrestling. Yeah, They're mm-hmm. both so it. hugely yeah. problematic. And I mm-hmm. think there are a lot of people who will make it in here who are problems in different ways. But yeah. I think that that kind of takes them out. Oh, Tainted no, legacy. Tainted legacy. Is it real? Because I only, I don't know Ric Flair's Tainted legacy. I only know Hulk Hogan's Tainted legacy. It's, and boy, of, is it a tainted legacy. Yeah, that's super tainted. Ric Flair's got a um, alleged uh, a mm. lot of predatory stuff. Not but, great. Uh, kind of makes it like, yeah, like it's real tough to. Even if it's only the documented things that he has. Oh, that's too. It's one of those yeah. situations that's where disappointing. A few because years 40 ago, years. it was just a laugh. Yeah. Uh, whereas now it's exposing yourself to flight crew. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. oh, well, maybe now that's I'm not questioning. That funny. I'm questioning Shawn Michaels' judgment in loving him then before kicking him. I mean, it's a great Dang, story. It's a really it's a great, great it's a great story. story. Well, story. Yes. And oh, Ric Flair, no. another great story. To, like, one of the best in the ring. I think his yeah. mic stuff is memorable, but not as good as other people because it always was the same. Like, it feels so like much if I yelling. Took, yeah, all of his interviews would line them up. <laughs> Damn, they dude. would follow the, the waveform would look identical. It would mm-hmm. like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would just all be at zero Woo! decibels, just uh-huh. blasting. And he yeah. never turned off, right? Like that was just his twenty-four hours a day yeah. gimmick. Yeah. My father-in-law has a story about having met him a million years ago in Myrtle Beach, and apparently he was walking down the street with a woman on each arm, and my As father-in-law went up to him, yeah, and said, "Like Rick, how do you do it?" And he turned around and said, because I'm Ric Flair and wooed in his face and walked away. And um, he was asked to tell me the story, but had no (laughs) dog in the fight. You know, it's not like he was like, I'm going to impress her with this one. He didn't know the depths of my wrestling uh, (laughs) interest. I have no reason to believe this is untrue in any way. Um, And that just solidifies to me that Ric Flair was Ric Flair always. And I don't know if that puts him higher up the list or further down. Yeah. Does that make him the greatest wrestler or just that dude? He's just yeah. that dude. Also, it's nice to know that Ric Flair was peak Ric Flair and that seeing Ric Flair in that town means that Myrtle Beach was also at peak Myrtle Beach. Yes. Because yes. there seems to be nothing more Myrtle Beach than yeah. to run into a professional wrestler. Yeah, exactly. It feels right, doesn't it? <laughs> so... I love taking Macho Man through on the card to the bouts, but I wonder what he sounds like in real or sounded like he's we've lost him, haven't we? Yeah, I'm gone. Many years gone. But I'll tell you what, I'm always going to live on in professional wrestling. There's no way he actually sounded like that. He he actually, if you hear him talk, he, his voice is probably a little bit uh, similar to this if he's talking kind of normal, yeah. which is brother, uh, who I think we've also lost, who is the mm. genius Lanny Poffo. Yeah, uh, he has a voice more like this. He looks and he they, like there are different parts. If you listen to them both, you get like the musical notes that they kind of match up. But yeah, the, he, the Macho Man did it all. What I'll tell you, including what. A, including a rap album. Speaking of including music, including a rap what? including a gangster rap album in the nineties. It was all about his beef with Hulk Hogan. I wish I was oh, kidding. Dear. Diss track. Oh no, diss track. Yeah, diss it's, track. it's it's all diss tracks. It's <laughs> called Be a Man. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this yeah, pushes like, him up the list, doesn't it? This pushes yeah. him further and further up the list. Yeah. Looking good yeah. for the Macho Man. I'll tell you what. Why don't we take a break and then mm-hmm. come back and we'll throw out some more names. We'll build this card and we'll determine who is at the top of the heap when it comes to professional wrestling. Sounds good. We'll be right back. Back for another game. You know it. What's going on? Just one more week till Max Fun Drive. <laughs> Hard to believe. It's been a heck of a year since the last one. We're now a worker-owned co-op. We raised $50,000 for charity last year. And we've added a bunch of awesome new shows. But do you think we're ready to do it again? Absolutely. Lovely new gifts are lined up. The episodes will be amazing. And wait till everyone hears the bonus content. Yeah, plus they know to go to MaximumFun.org slash newsletter, so they're getting all the news. Oh, like that meetup day is on Thursday, March 21st. Then what's bothering you? Me? Oh, nothing. We're all set for Max Fun Drive to start on Monday, March 18th. I just didn't want you to see this coming. Check. What? Hang on! Most of the plants humans eat are technically grass. Most of the asphalt we drive on is almost a liquid. The formula of WD-40 is San Diego's greatest secret. Zippers were invented by a Swedish immigrant love story. On the podcast Secretly Incredibly Fascinating, we explore this type of amazing stuff. Stuff about ordinary topics like cabbage and batteries and socks. Topics you'd never expect to be the title of the podcast. Secretly Incredibly Fascinating. Find us by searching for the word secretly in your podcast app. And at MaximumFun.org. All right. Who else is getting on this card, folks? Who do we have from the Attitude Era? Let's jump to the Attitude Era now. Stone Cold for sure. Stone Cold's on the list. Oh, um, you know, it's it's is getting a little dude heavy for me, but it, it has to be said. We got to put Kurt Angle on there. Oh, he was yeah. the actually the only actual wrestler, right? Uh, well, there's yeah. a, there's been several actual yeah. wrestlers, yeah. which is which is dope. Um, but yeah, I mean, decorated Olympian. Um, yeah. Yeah. and I don't think anyone expected that on top of the fact that obviously he was going to be so take to the ring like nothing that he was mm-hmm. going to have so much charisma and be so incredibly funny he's yeah. another one he could turn it on a dime he can be incredibly like deadly and dangerous or mm-hmm. he could be really goofy and hose you down with milk like he can do either <laughs> of those things yeah he can like break your arm break your leg or he can wear a tiny little hat like you don't know <laughs> <laughs> which one he's going to do and he had again he was another one who had a longish career longish long career he held up tna for many many years mm-hmm. so i think that he's got to be part of the conversation when it comes to alltimers cool i'll I, throw out I a female that. wrestler because we don't have enough of them from the attitude mm-hmm. era i would take i mean you have lita and trish stratus both of them had a bunch of seasons i would take trish stratus i'm going to throw trish stratus out there because I think her story, when you look at it, is kind of incredible. She started out as eye candy and then became mm. a main event wrestler and then came back last year. Oh, my God. Put on maybe the best match of her career well into her 40s, if not her early 50s, against Becky Lynch. But yeah, in like a feud that kind of went on a little like this went on too long. And the last time they wrestled wasn't great. And they go have this match. And if it's the last match she ever has. It's such a great cap on an important trailblazing career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she not only meant a lot to wrestling when she was active, but she's one of those people that if you trace back where women are now in WWE, you can draw a direct line to Mm -hmm. what she and Lita and Ivory and all the women wrestling then in China, Alea Shulam were able to do. Mm -hmm. And she's still, the fact that she can still do it blows my mind. Yeah, I think it's really great that we got to see that side of her. Like you say, there's, she has a real journey. You can follow that journey, but that we got to see this version of her. We got to see the heel turn. We got to see her mocking the fans. You know, there were people, there were people <laughs> showing up to these recent live events saying like, Oh, I grew up with Trish on my wall and I'm so excited to have her here. And thank you, Trish. Thank you, Trish. And she basically told them to go themselves, uh, because she doesn't care. That's not what she's here for. She's there in spite of them. And I always think that's such a fun. I love a heel turn when it's turn on the crowd. But it's like, <laughs> don't cheer me. I hate you. That's my favorite. When uh, And they, they eat it up even more, especially because it's her, because people love her so much. 
Uh, it was a delightful heel turn. And then, yeah, for the brutality of it in that final match against Becky, that was uh, pretty impressive. I, yeah. I don't know where she pulled that out from. It gets really hard, especially because we've been a lot of focusing just because like wrestling is such a huge subject. A lot of our focus mm-hmm. right now has been on U.S. wrestling. Um, but it's especially hard uh, when we talk about like people who are like big enough names to really be in the conversation because mm-hmm. of the state of women's wrestling and the fact that like it's you cannot um you really can't like put enough of a fine point on how important trish was when she came out because Mm -hmm. this was during an era where a lot of women's wrestling when she was doing like her good work was not like where it is now and um for them for her and lita to be able to come out and be like no like you are going to pay attention to our match we're not just going to strip down to our bras and panties i know that's what y'all like but you can watch me wear pants and do this hurricane rana yeah and you're gonna love it and so uh one great thing that that has been happening a lot of is like now that women do have things like royal rumbles you know different uh, you know women in the elimination chamber things like that is that legends who interest stratus is a legend get to come back now and take parts in like these kinds of matches that they weren't able to back in like their height of their popularity which is freaking dope while we're talking about women wrestlers you had mentioned her before i was like oh yeah that's another one that i in my limited knowledge know do we think ronda rousey merits no. a mention going no. into this no no nope. we don't like ronda Move rousey <laughs> she's, she's not that. she's not good in the ring and okay. it's not that and it's not that she can't be and that's why it's upsetting because oh. we know that she yeah we she's we know crazy. that she could be and she's, she's also crazy. another olympic champion i was curious uh Yo, actually she's, lazy. she's bad okay. in the ring she's bad on the mic she <laughs> doesn't pull a weight she does not play nicely with others what and what do you think was the appeal what like blew her up so big money yeah yeah i, I mean, mean she, she does she, <laughs> yeah she does and, 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 yeah, in mma she was already people loved her in mma oh she, she went done. from mma to to wrestling she and left oh after, i didn't i didn't know which way the order yeah, went so oh no no, no no yeah she was mma first imploded. she was mma first her USC oh, okay. career imploded she she lost her belt and then she had a real ugly match after she lost her belt when you know how that happens in UFC. Sometimes you lose mm-hmm. your your momentum, and that is it. And it all went very badly. And I'm not a big MMA person, but I was following that at the time because I was curious. And she is a trailblazer right. in that world, and I'll give her her due, of course. But when they announced she was coming over to WWE and she turned up, I was kind of like, "Huh, okay, let's see." Because sometimes when people come from UFC, you mm-hmm. don't know which way they're going to go. Are they coming yes. in because they are actually massive fans, and they're coming in with? But deference, but respect for what wrestling right. is, for right. the art form that is wrestling. Uh, you know, you've got your Brock Lesnar's, who is a beast in UFC, but comes right. in and when he wants to, uh, absolutely respects the product and gives it his all. And then it turns out we have our Ronda Rousey, who comes in and is not especially respectful. And part of that was her gimmick, but I think it was a gimmick that was based in how she was perceived by everyone in the locker room. Oh, I interesting. don't think it was a pretty time for anybody. And it did not go as well as the WWE would have liked. The I matches were hot garbage. Well. The matches they were, not were hot good. garbage. There you go. She injured some people. Uh, I don't think it went as well as she would like. And when it was all said and done and it was over, it was kind of a damp squib. Well, like, oh, that was a thing. It that should happened. have been, it, and that's one of those things where you see something where it's like this one and one is about to make two, and you're like, how? How does one and one? It's like we're doing, you know, how um, what's his name? Uh, Terry has Terryology, like that. The the dude from Hustle and Flow has his own math. This is Terryology, where it's like <laughs> one and one. We're we're expecting it to equal two, but like it's zero, and that makes no sense. How is it and a now zero? it's like negative one. Like yeah. I don't <laughs> understand. Like one and one equals a bathroom break and it that didn't it didn't it, yeah. it was very confusing Oof. for all of us well i have one person from attitude era i want to throw out we can talk about him mm-hmm. later and that's the rock i think we gotta talk about him at sure. least have um, a combo yeah but i, I want to springboard off of him if i can mark to talk mm-hmm. about his cousin who the rock's is, cousin who, who is in the midst of the height it, of which his one? career oh that one <laughs> <laughs> roman reigns <laughs> who, so many. roman reigns yeah has become he's another one with a real interesting story like came in with a lot of promise was part of a big important faction called the shield then Mm -hmm. seth rollins the architect the mastermind of the shield turns on everybody and roman reigns goes in uh, into this era where he is 
forced down people's throats, much like The Rock was, as like this baby face and they write all of his lines for him, like Mm -hmm. trying to turn him into Bugs Bunny, but that's not, he's like a natural kind of egotistical dude, as much as he's also a husband and a great dad to his daughter. He Speaking of tall, brooding chaps that watch him linger in doorways and stare you down. That's his yeah. natural place. For, yeah. for He's like last... a huge hunk, and they tried to make him like goofy, and it's like, no, yeah. no, no, no. Like, there's, there's, there's only, only one, one Jason of those. Momoa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's 100%. <laughs> they tried to make him yeah. Jason, but that's not who he is. And since they let up off of that, and, you know, he had a lot of success through that character, but since they let him be a bad guy, not only has his character become compelling, it must watch television whenever he shows up, but the matches that he turns in are spectacular i don't know that he's we don't have his whole body of work yet he's in the top of his game right now but he is yeah he's it's not hard to look at him and say he's one of the best who's ever done it and certainly the record that they've decided to give him of what 1200 days now as a world champion yeah. is impressive but it's 60 i think we're at right that's now that's wild right? it's, which is it's crazy a, it's a testament to how good he is that he's Still compelling as a champion after four years. That's crazy to think of, but it's true. I think what's yeah. so interesting about Roman Reigns to me as well is it's not only a testament to he as a, as a wrestler, him as a wrestler and him as a person. Mm-hmm. I feel like it is also, there is an element of a WWE patting themselves on the back <laughs> with him because he's a testament to their own tenacity that they were yeah. like, we told you. You kept ordering fries, and we kept sending you baked potatoes, and you kept sending them back and saying, I don't want baked potatoes, I want fries. And we knew eventually you were going to go, well, bugger me back with Bob. I did want a baked potato. I love the baked potato. Send me more baked potatoes, only baked potatoes from now on. Um, And I don't think that's an insult to him or his skill at all, because I couldn't have done what he did. I couldn't come out and get Food out of the building every week. Ooh, I could when I'm not being paid stood to stood be in front of the crowd. Right, <laughs> I couldn't have won the Royal Rumble and then had people booing at me so much they sent the Rock out to make them stop, and they didn't stop. They went like, harder. I, they went harder. I've been in arenas when people came for him, and it was ugly. And yeah. he mm-hmm. still came to work every week. He still did exactly what was asked of him. The way he has improved is unreal people look at me the wrong way and i fold up and cry like i <laughs> just like go to ground and they, they yeah. looked at me funny i think they don't like me people really wanted him to know they didn't like him yeah and yeah. he doesn't have the someone else we should talk about but he doesn't have the seeming missing piece that john cena has that allows him to block <laughs> out humanity yeah. Yeah. john cena's a robot uh, yeah. And I don't think anything gets to him. I'm sure it does. That's probably a terrible thing to say. He's probably crying right now listening to this. But Roman his Reigns is behind human. His like, yeah. right? Don't you feel Roman Reigns' emotions are always kind of there under the surface? Especially yeah. because, think, like, we would see when he would biff those promos. Yes, and you exactly. would watch you the light behind his eyes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Which is why now it's so much more powerful that the emotion he has managed to maintain under the surface is simmering rage (laughs) combined with arrogance and eventually it will be his downfall but that's his storyline version i just think as a human being as a worker i cannot credit that man enough because i could never have done what he's done and to have come back from leukemia in the middle of that what Mm -hmm. what this is a stellar human being yeah was he now when when he was facing all this hate? Was he uh, a baby face or was he a heel at this time? White baby, face. baby face for no good yeah. reason. Wow, it was weird. Yeah, and we begged him I, just to let him take his shirt off, face. Mark. We were like, let that man take his shirt off <laughs> and let us hate him. And take out the glue contacts. We'll give yeah. you all our money. <laughs> Get and off that vest. So long. They said no. The vest yeah. stays on, <laughs> and it was the wrong decision. And eventually we got what we wanted. Yeah. yeah. I also was like not into him a lot during that era because they were trying to put on a sweater that didn't fit. Like they were trying to like squeeze him into the rock mold and he's not the rock. He's his own dude. And it wasn't fair for him that they were giving him promos where he would literally say like suffering succotash. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> what? Yeah. They wanted That's him true. to replace John Cena by being the rock and John Cena. And it's like, well, what yeah. if you let him be? 
Roman Reigns. This is wacky, but what if we did that? I love that. Uh, is there anyone else that we want to throw into the mix? I currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten wrestlers oh, in perfect. this mix. It's kind of perfect. We can, if we want to throw in, if we want to throw in one more, we need to throw in two more. But uh, is there anyone else? We can else have, we a, we have? Could have a triple threat. We could throw in someone else and, and have a triple threat match. If That's we true. To. I feel bad not mentioning John Cena, and not because. Yeah. I'm a massive John Cena fan, but because he did all those things for the company that we've credited other people with doing, like he yeah. held the company up for a long time. Yes. He is a crossover success. He comes back and the crowd goes wild. Yeah. He's a you funny know, dude. Gonna, yeah, he's a talented yeah. dude. And I would feel really bad. <laughs> yeah, and he's able like to like, get yeah. back to him somehow in the cigar room. Yeah, because yeah. like, because that we we keep making jokes about his moat in his cigar room. Because not only did John Cena have to play the version of John Cena that's on that show, he also had to play the version of John Cena that was on Total Divas and Total Bellas, and that version of John Cena is fucking insane. <laughs> um, and he had he like just all likes of a these nice clean rules. countertop. What is your problem? <laughs> what is your problem? Yeah. He yeah, likes he's the way the marble these. looks with nothing on it. I don't see what the issue is. He yeah. literally had a moat. <laughs> oh, still does. Probably still does. Oh, um, but yeah, well. so, and, and yeah, so John is, he's definitely like, he carried that torch for a really long time. And he is, okay. you know, he is a great worker. I would say uh, people make fun of him for five moves of doom. He was, he has expanded his move set and we all get surprised when he does. I would say that like, I mean, and, and you know, there's the whole thing that he dresses like a giant child because he's for children and cause he, he is and he is. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I think that Cena's got to be at least in the discussion of it. All right. I agree. Do we want to add one more then? So we have matches, uh, or do we want to have one of these triple matches? I think a triple match. There's so many people you could add. I like Randy yeah. Orton's been there a very long time. Had a lot Eddie of Eddie Guerrero. We haven't. Eddie Guerrero. Mentioned Nobody mentioned Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes is great. Dusty Rhodes, Rey I mean, Mysterio, if we're doing like, honorable mentions. Yeah, you could do a lot. If we're Honestly, doing honorable Chris mentions, Jericho has had a, a great career. He's Iron Sheik at the top, and Iron Sheik was great. A fantastic run on Twitter. But uh, mankind, uh, his Twitter run was better than Matt, his. Yeah, Matt Mick Foley and all the work <laughs> that he Mick did. Foley. CM Punk is somebody you could put in the discussion, but I I would argue he had great runs, but there's so many peaks and valleys in his career. Yeah, and I don't think well, he you take ever ten was, years off and it's gonna put a bit of a bump yeah. in the road, isn't it? He either didn't have the opportunity, or just like it just never worked out that he had to carry a major mm -hmm. company for a long period of time. So I think the people we have are the winner is among them, I would say. All right. Well, yeah. what about anybody from way, way back? I know this wasn't an era that any of y'all were watching, but Killer is Kowalski. it worth, is it worth talking about, uh, Bruno or Andre or Jerry the King? No, they're attractions. <laughs> it's never Andre worth talking attraction. about Jerry the King. Like, no. that's what I know. The less about Jerry, probably the better. <laughs> oh, no. See, this, I, I'm going to keep throwing out names of people that turn out to be really I mean, it's look, huh? this, Welcome to wrestling. Yeah, yeah it's, that's wrestling. <laughs> all right. Don't get too attached. So, all right. Let's start, uh, let's start having some battles, shall we? Let's do it. All right. I am going to pair these up and in one case, triple this up. All right. You're booking. I'm doing the booking for these yeah, battles. The pencil. You the will record. determine, <laughs> you will determine who wins each of these bouts. Okay. And then we will have five. We'll throw them all in the ring together and we'll have one victor pop out. Beautiful. Lindsay, I know you mentioned having crossed intergender matches, but we're going to start with Trish Stratus versus Becky Lynch. I mean, we've seen it. So I feel like we do know the winner there. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't matter. This is Trish. our determined. No, outcome. I know. I'm just, I, I love me a Trish, but I don't see how Becky doesn't come out on top. No. She's scrappy. Uh, Becky's scrappy, if nothing yeah. else. Yeah, the, the satisfaction, the satisfaction versus the disarmor. I'm sorry, I got to go with Becky. Becky is just, yeah. again, she's scrappier. Becky is a fighter. Anybody mm -hmm. whose finisher is a submission is like not somebody to mess around with. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's uh, that feels old school. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh. Becky means it. Very like old when school. Becky wrestles, Becky means it, and that's why I think I love her so much. Yeah, you believe <laughs> it. You buy into her. Here's our triple battle. You ready oh. for a triple battle? Yeah. This battle is called the family. <laughs> for two reasons, which will become very apparent very soon. This is a triple battle between The Rock, Roman Reigns, and John Cena. This is the family. No. Everybody from Fast and Furious movies. Yep. And their spinoffs. 
<laughs> nice. We haven't really talked about The Rock. The Rock is like this weird guy who, again, like walking charisma still. Mm-hmm. I think he could walk into any room and charm the pants off of anybody. Best the post-wrestling mic- career of anyone. Yeah, he's in this weird spot now where they brought mm-hmm. him back for what was supposed to be a dream match, but it got in the way of what everybody wanted to see, and that has led to him turning into a bad guy. And mm-hmm. on Monday night, he gave what might be one of the top five promos of his career. Yeah, it's really. Primer coming Pretty back. Great. And having like these vested, I don't know if you remember the shirts he used to wear, those really ornate shirts he would wear to it's the a, ring. He's a Versace guy. Versace, Versace situation. Yeah. yeah. It's an ugly ass Versace yeah. situation. Yeah. He had an open, an open vest made of the Versace material. He had his, his heel sunglasses on, proceeded to run down the audience, including like just somebody chanting. And then he just goes, you shut your mouth or I'm going to slap the herpes off your lips. Like the stuff he has loaded. <laughs> in his bag of tricks is, he's so is good great. on the mic and he's he's like a better wrestler than you think he is he's not the best uh technical by far but similar to john cena the way he tells a story is really good and now he's not only gone out and had mainstream success and come back a couple times but he's now on the board of the company so he's he's throwing it in a much bigger way but does he beat john cena who, who i think he beats john cena you think I know beat that Roman the Rock has things on his counter at home because I've seen it on Instagram. Also, he right. has an energy drink and a vodka brand, true, a tequila <laughs> brand, yeah. and he's Maui in Moana. Yeah. So That's true. I true. just really feel like but peacemaker. these are not wrestling issues. <laughs> yeah, but mm. Peacemaker has Eagly. You're right. Yeah, but well, I, I feel like I it's. Mean, yeah, I, I, I haven't heard The Rock call in his own matches quite so loud. So maybe True. I'm going to yeah. give him that. Edge. But but Mark, to be fair, hear... yeah, you can you can hear you can hear John Cena call his spots from space. But it does help yeah. people keep people safe. I will say that yeah. as irritating as it is, I know at least that no one's going to mishear what spot it is because I could hear it from home. <laughs> so he's so basically he's calling what's happening next. Yeah, the, when you see for, them for like, safety go in the corner, for the other wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, when their heads are next to each other in the corner, they're usually going like shoot to the corner, watch the back elbow and like, and then they do that. But for him, he's like, I'm going to pin you now. <laughs> like that level of, of And the mic is like picking it up perfectly. Yeah. I think he's got an extra love on him. It, it looks like the just in case he missed it. Yeah. I think it's one of those, like when they do the behind the scenes, like they mic up the players during a football game. Like yeah. <laughs> they're always, they just never told us they were always having John mic'd up. I think that with, with the John and, uh, Rock and Roman situation, the Rock and Roman wind up getting so like taken up by each other. I think, I think they're both trying to fight. And then at one point they fight each other and they take each other out. And that's what mm-hmm. gets Cena. Cena wins. So Cena's Cena wins this battle. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's surprising. Wow. Bold all choice. right. For, for all, for all, last one, last one added to the list and, uh, all that love for Roman Reigns, but he's getting booted along bye, with Roman. The Rock. Bye, Sorry, Joe. bye, Roman. Bye, they take uh, each other out. Like they, 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 they fight. Out. They Cause fight it's an ego thing. Out. Yeah. Joe and Dwayne are gone. I love that we're getting not only, uh, who the victor is, but descriptions of the match. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm doing this the it's entire great. time. Oh, I role play for a living. <laughs> All right. Uh, this might be imbalanced, but we, you know what? No, I'm going to go to a different one. I'm going to go a little bit old school for the next one. And we're going to battle Macho Man Randy Savage versus The Undertaker. Ooh. I mean, is it at WrestleMania or not? That's the question, right? Because Ooh, yep. if it's at WrestleMania, Randy Savage is this a is at we got dis- this mania disadvantage. Mm. I I love Randy so much, but I don't know. Paul Bear is there. He's yeah. got the urn. What Ugh, if Paul Bear Paul went Bearer. after Miss Elizabeth? Randy would have no hope. No oh. hope. Because yeah. he would always yeah. pursue love over victory. And I, like. J- I- Here's the thing about Randy Savage is he reached a point like later Randy Savage couldn't go like earlier Randy Savage did. I think Undertaker had a style and he had mm-hmm. bad matches as he got older. For sure, he had bad matches throughout his career. But the fact mm-hmm. that in five different decades he was main eventing in an attraction yeah. is – and like his character, he starts as this as this weird undead guy. Then he goes into a cult guy. Then he becomes biker guy into biker hey. MMA guy. Then back to the dead man. And each version, as he goes along, it has 
shades of what came before. So he keeps evolving. By the time he gets back like to a Pokemon. originally, like a Pokemon, <laughs> he's, he's, he uh, Vince McMahon has him in a little white and red ball. <laughs> yeah. So, Undertaker. <laughs> I think he's got to be the winner. All right. Yeah. Also, don't underestimate how impressive it is that he can still just sit up at, at yeah. his height, size, and age. Because I can't do that. <laughs> well, like, and you can right. all day, and it won't help you. Like, how Look. is he doing that? Yeah. No one's and that's what happens feet. is that Randy goes for the elbow, Taker pops mm. up and then grabs him and gets him into a, uh, then grabs him and gets him into a choke slam. And the Heaven's Gate. Oh, yeah. All yeah. right. We're not going to tombstone Randy because he's fresh. No. Like, yeah, right. He needs his neck. <laughs> Look, as a Tennessean, it is very delightful for me to say UT with the victory. <laughs> no, this time it means Undertaker. <laughs> All right, our next battle, may seem a little lopsided, but look, it, there's going to be a couple of these. This is actual wrestler Kurt Angle versus actual redneck Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, Ooh. that's a tough one. It's a tough one. I mean, are we allowed to bring pets into this? Because oh, it's yeah. bringing his pets. <laughs> oh, yeah. walk so are, we, are we talking snakes? It's, no, no, Steve. Steve his pet? has a menagerie now. Of he oh, has really? famously had a bunch of dogs, really great dogs. Hershey yeah, the Wonder cool. Dog, Moolah, like a bunch of good dogs. Yeah. Now he's living on a ranch in Nevada, and he has recently adopted uh, some barn cats. Right on the, the cat that stole the world's heart, Poncho. Poncho, who yeah. gets a daily check in on Instagram stories now, and Poncho's yeah. friend Lefty, who doesn't like to let Steve touch him, which I can respect because he's a barn cat. But I think if Steve's coming in with, with the Doctor Doolittle menagerie of pets, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Angle can do this because he wouldn't yeah. want to fight pets. Angle's a sweetie. I feel Although like open Pandora's the box, milk, right? Yeah. If he shot Poncho with the milk, that could distract Poncho. We'll see. Th- then it's milk versus beer, milky beery, as we call it back yeah. in Seattle. <laughs> the old milky beery. Yeah. <laughs> I am not going to a bar in Seattle anytime soon. <laughs> No. My immediate Everything thought was, is wet. milk stout, milk stout, delicious. <laughs> but actually, Just, that's not how you make that, is it? <laughs> the sound when that glass breaks to mm. this day will mm. make you deaf watching it on television. I've never, yeah. I don't think I've ever in the shows that I've gone to seen Steve Austin come out. But the I way it seen sounds, him come out and you've it's seen it. It's it is. nuts. It yeah. is always nuts. Yeah. It, it, the it's the so, place goes off. And we love Kurt Angle just talking about like the way that the it factor and all those things. Mm-hmm. His cameo meme is very funny, but any normie on social media, you put that glass breaking to a video and they know what that means in context and they have a good idea of what's about to happen in that video. Yeah. Like you see a video that's two old grandmas in Target and you hear that glass break, somebody not <laughs> getting knocked out. Like yeah. oh. that's just part of the cultural language. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I can now I'm just going to be waiting to watch videos of two grannies in Target and then hear that sound. I just want that glass break. I guarantee you it exists somewhere. I want it. I want Check it. Check the old tick and tock or tout. So is Kurt Angle just minding his business at home? Hears that glass break and then gets taken out. Yeah. Is that was happening. Yes. That, that Steve comes in on the Kawasaki. Uh, he right. rolls in <laughs> yeah. on the four wheeler yep. on the ATV, right. takes him well, out with the Steve Weiser. We have one battle left. And uh, I think we know what battle that is. Mm, the classic. That is Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart. This is the classic matchup. I, I mean, I know where I'm going to go, but I do have a reason for it. I think Bret wants his lick back. Mm-hmm. And I think Bret remains a more spiteful man than Shawn, who has <laughs> oh, yes, invited yes. forgiveness into his heart, <laughs> which weakens him, quite frankly, says the spiteful <laughs> woman. It makes him weak. <laughs> Uh, and Brett has done no such thing. <laughs> Carries his rage with him like a shield. Right. And I think Brett kills him dead. I think Brett says, yeah, let's have a nice clean fight. And then murders him with one punch. I, I don't yeah. even think Sean gets up. <laughs> he does. Uh, but then Triple H comes down and hits Brett in the back of the head with a belt, reverses the pin, <laughs> and Shawn Michaels screws over Red oh. again. I don't I, I hear what you're saying. Mm. I just don't know if he would allow that with all the goodness in his heart now. Are we about I, to pull the Hollywood screw well, job he'd be right out. now? Uh. He'd be like me me and me knocked out me no remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have to hate him even more, but you're probably right. 
Yeah. God damn it, Hunter. <laughs> imaginary, imaginary Hunter. Why hey, you or it we can it again. Hunter, Hunter takes off his mask and it's Goldberg underneath. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, like Scooby-Doo. Brett, Brett, Brett. Brett. <laughs> So who's uh who's who's our victor here? What other criteria can we look at for the it two of these? It has to be Shawn Aside Michaels. This- it just has to be Shawn Michaels. I love Bret Hart, but it has to be mm. Shawn Michaels. It Hasn't just, Bret Hart like- been through enough? Yeah, well, it's time for him. I don't know. I've seen wrestling with shadows. Some of that might have been self inflicted. <laughs> Let's wrestling be honest. With sh- yeah. Let's oh. not look. His version of history will always be that he was eternally wrong by everybody and was always right, and he was. The screw job was terrible and stupid. That was yeah, more bad Vince business. McMahon. Bad that business. really was Vince McMahon. Everybody who participated is culpable, yeah. but the real villain is Vince. Right. Lindsay, who, just just for the record, I take no pleasure in this. I I I, I take no pleasure. Wasn't, I, I said when I mentioned him, I'm struggling right now, but I'm prepared to be a grown up because I've got to be, and none of you are within striking distance. So <laughs> I. <laughs> Said when I mentioned him, I wasn't necessarily going to go to bat for him as the greatest of all time. I am, uh, I'm a Libra. I like to see justice, <laughs> you know, and I would love to see him get his W over Sean, but Sean's a sneaky piece of poop and Hal's probably yeah. right. So <laughs> I will enjoy my virtue win, you know, my moral mm-hmm. victory. As yeah. as Brett stand in here, I will enjoy my moral victory, and I will allow Sean to progress and look forward to seeing him being murdered in the next round. Morals, 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 morals. That's the thing that everybody chants at WWE yes. uh, at WrestleMania, right? <laughs> yeah, everybody just sits there and chants morals. <laughs> let's, let's go, go ethics. ethics. <laughs> <laughs> here is in our final final match of. We got this mania. Entering the ring, Becky Lynch, I know Stone Cold I Steve music. Austin. <laughs> Where, Ken, we have the right to all the music, right? <laughs> what if we <laughs> sing it? <laughs> sure, great. <laughs> Becky Lynch, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, and John Cena mm-hmm. enter a ring. Only one leaves. Who is the greatest wrestler of all time? balls um well first things first taker's gonna chill in the corner for a second so we can just like leave him there for a few minutes (laughs) that ramp is long (laughs) here's what i love he rode down it on his motorbike again and almost came off again (laughs) mark's mom's name across that's right across his neck (laughs) when where'd you when'd you get suzanne written on you Here's what I love. I love that I'm so used to in this show trying to objectively go, okay, well, wh- why don't we look at wrestling style? Why don't we look at who's better technically in the ring versus who's better on the mic? And Danielle's like, no, 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 forget that. The stage is set. We're going with the battle. It could be a major oh, yeah. upset. This the is all you are. You are itself. McManning. You are Danielle <laughs> McMahon right now. Special. Uh, it is. It's difficult. My heart says it goes down to Becky and Steve, and I don't I, know why. Well, you meant the that. very first thing we talked about was how Becky Lynch is the heir apparent to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Right, and I just think she is good enough and crafty enough to actually take out a few of these fellas herself. Yeah. I, and I could see her and Steve teaming up to take mm-hmm. out a John Cena because sure, John sure. wouldn't strike a woman, even no. if he was told to. Absolutely not. He, he won't even let one in the cigar room. He, John That's might right. eliminate himself from this. You know, John yeah. might just be like, uh, ladies first. <laughs> you know, it would just be like, I have to be back on set. The strike is over. Yeah. I am needed. So John we eliminate, eliminate John Cena tail. because he's yeah. going back to the set of Eagerly Fast would come 10 down, too. pick him up in his talons yeah. and whisk him back to the Peacemaker <laughs> set. <laughs> All right, yeah. Cena, you've John. been eliminated. I think yeah, they all team up on Undertaker and take him out. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. It takes yeah. all three of them. All right. It Which takes Shawn great. Michaels, Stone Cold, and Becky Lynch to take out the Undertaker. Well, cool. yeah. And right. Becky's going to go for the arm because that's the choke slam right there. So yeah. she's got to yeah. take out that arm. She can sure. take out the arm. Point. Stone Cold could always go for a low blow. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, and Sean kicks him in the face and says, I'm sorry, I don't love you. But he does love him because they're (laughs) friends, right? Like, aren't they little Texas besties? Uh, so I, but I do, but we know that Sean is happy to kick someone in the face and and eliminate them. So I think Becky and Steve soften him up and Sean knocks him out. All right. So now we've got Becky Lynch. We've got Stone Cold Steve Austin and Lindsay's favorite, Sean Michaels. (laughs) They're all battling it out in the ring. What happens next? Yeah, I think Becky and Stone Cold team up against Sean. I think I knew you would say I that. I think they do. And I, and yeah. I don't know if that yeah. works because none of these three could trust each other. And Becky's flaw might be that she's too trust in here. Yeah. She might yeah. be so enamored of uh, Stone Cold's support that it could be her downfall. So she somehow gets screwed in this. I feel like that's. I feel like the two chaps in the ring have mm-hmm. less concern with screwing her than she would have with screwing them. I think if she forged an alliance with Steve, she would believe mm-hmm. in that alliance. More than Steve would. More than Steve would. Yeah. I think while Steve and Becky are talking about being an alliance, that Sean rolls her up. He surprises yeah. her with a cradle mm-hmm. and gets the And pen. Stone Cold just Julian lets it happen. You know, it's yeah. like he didn't do anything. He didn't do it. All right, yeah. so Becky Lynch has just been eliminated. It is down to no two man. wrestlers for the greatest wrestler of all time. It is Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Sean, the Heartbreak Kid. Michaels, was yeah. that Sean? Heartbreak yep, yep. Kid, Sean Michaels, yeah. All right, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Sean Michaels. What's going to happen? Well, I mean, uh, they're both gonna Sean, bleed. Yeah, well, and Sean, <laughs> Sean's sober, right? So can we scare him with a can of beer? Yeah, you can at least open one in the vicinity. You can for sure, like one of those sweet IPAs, a sweet so gold IPA. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, get him a milk stout cheap. from Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> shower him, shower him in it. You like a um, oh man, I just love Stone Cold so much because I love that damn cat. But I, I don't know. I enjoy, so stepping outside of the ring for a minute, I enjoy Stone Cold's body of work more mm-hmm. than Sean's. I don't know if I could say who is an actual better wrestler. Like physically, the yeah. act of in wrestling in the ring, the technical yeah. skill, you mean? But I enjoy Stone Cold's body of work and his... Mm-hmm post wrestling career and the stuff he's done since uh i enjoy more than i and i'm I'm trying to be objective because i do Mm. i do like Shawn michaels obviously i generally tell people that i knew i had found my home in new york when my friends took me out on the first night and i walked into a bar and they were playing his theme music and i was like i have arrived (laughs) fantastic i found my place yeah it was magical and it never happened again which was very strange are you sure it's not your theme music oh (laughs) you might just have the same theme music i do think i'm cute so you're right you're right uh, oh i I feel like hal's dying over there well Well, because i I am I am definitely thinking of like how satisfying that Stone Cold Stunner would be because Sean could oh, sell, sell like that Stunner. Mother. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He look, he would have got stunned yesterday. He's still selling it today. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like here's here's where my internal struggle is. I, I love them both. Mm-hmm. I think Stone Cold was a bigger star at his height. Mm-hmm. I think Shawn Michaels, in terms of the way the DNA of his work is rooted in wrestling, like he goes out and has one of the best careers of all time. Then he trains a guy who goes out and is in the midst of having one of the best careers of all time in Daniel Bryan slash Brian Danielson. Mm-hmm. So he has taken what he's found, like the other people who are special and trained them and gotten them out there. And there are yeah. so many, I think there are more wrestlers who will tell you that Shawn Michaels was their inspiration and yeah. someone who they patted themselves after than Stone mm-hmm. Cold, which isn't a knock yeah. against Stone Cold. It's just a point for Shawn Michaels. Like, he's just... Yeah. And you can see him in the yeah. DNA. You can see him in someone like Adolph Ziggler. You can see him, mm-hmm. like, in yeah. rap, they you know, call Johnny those Gargano, their sons. You know, like all yeah. People. They call someone like that their sons. Like, you can see all of Shawn yeah. Michaels' sons, you know? 
I feel yeah. like Shaw Michaels is part of, like you say, part of the DNA, part of the product. But I also feel like his career is a, a not smaller, that's not right, but like a smaller part of a bigger story. Mm-hmm. I don't think of Shawn Michaels as standing alone. I think of Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. I think of Montreal Screwjob. I think of DX. I think of <sighs> right. all of his feuds. Mm-hmm. I think of him as a piece of the tapestry. like a And the click and all threat. of that. Heritage. Yeah, I think of him yeah. as being so integral to all of that. And I don't even know which side of my argument I'm making here. Right. I, I always yeah. think of him as part of it. But Stone Cold to me is just a straight up solid star. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And Whereas I don't Sean's know. like woven into the fabric of yes, wrestling. Yes, right? Exactly. Yeah. But there is no current WWE without Stone Cold. Like, he echoes through in a different way. He echoes through in Becky. He echoes through in Kevin Owens. He echoes through in so many people, but True. in a different way. Shawn Michaels is also the guy who didn't leave. So there's no Stone Cold Steve Austin. I, like, the company might not have been there Without Sean, you know, he was there for the no, I know, the and he also years. lost his smile, you know, he, he got did. sad. Oh, yeah, like tr- he got sad. <laughs> Certainly, a lot of bad. I mean, Stone Cold walked out on Raw, like they have yeah. each had weird, but he regrets moments. it. He, has said yeah. he does regret it, he does he has regret said it, since. which takes a big man to admit that. It, it seems like what I'm hearing is. If you asked a wrestling fan, tell me if, I, if this is way off. If you ask a wrestling fan who's the greatest of all time, there would be a heck of a lot of them that would say Stone Cold Steve Austin. If you asked a professional wrestler who was yeah. the greatest of all yeah. time, there'd yeah. be a heck of a lot of them that said Shawn Michaels. Yeah. So yeah. who do we listen to in that? Do we go with the one who is the bigger star or do we the, go with the one who, as you said, is woven into the tapestry of wrestling? If we're if going we're, with wrestling mm. rules, aren't we going where the money is? Then we have to go with Stone Cold. Mm. He's got the catchphrases. You know, you walk up to someone and say, Stone Cold said so. You know, it, like, it, mm-hmm. he yeah. has the catchphrases. He has the look. He's yeah. so iconic. Sold more merch. We do love Suck merch. It, but only one we person has it, a catchphrase CX, that right? irritates me. Yeah, that irritates mm-hmm. me every time someone's trying to make a point. Stop saying what? Stop saying what? Stop saying what? <laughs> yeah. 316? Stone Cold 316? Like, mm-hmm. he has his own day. Yeah. Real. Yeah. The crowd, I mean, to this day, Mark, he started doing this when he was a bad guy. He would be mm-hmm. in the middle of, he would break up his own promos by just going, what? What? And do it, and then do it to other wrestlers, and the crowd started doing it. And anybody who, to this day, anytime you watch a show, at least one person when when they're on the mic, they'll start saying what, what. The crowd will repeat that. We're going on twenty years later. Since yeah. he did that. I mean, we years. had The Rock doing it back at the crowd, uh, at the WrestleMania promo event. Yeah, uh, yeah. He he weaponized it against the crowd, but yeah, that yeah. originates with Stone Cold and. You cannot take that out, even if you wanted to. Yeah, that's just a universal. Yeah. Well, uh, oof. All right. Wow. So do we have our answer? Is it has has Stone Cold defeated Shawn Michaels in the way that Danielle is about to describe? <laughs> Go ahead, Danielle. All right. Um. So as I said, I think that it's uh, it's a very simple. We get Sean tries to do him uh, a little kickity kick. He tries to do some sweet chin music. Um, I think that Stone Cold actually does uh, wind up ducking that. Sean falls to the ground. We get a little bit of Stone Cold doing the flicky offy and doing the rattlesnake thing where he's on his knees and he's doing the head or whatever. He pops up. Sean pops up. Uh, Sean's tired. He goes, does an Irish whip. Uh, Steve. Gets him kicking the tummy. We know what's next. Um, he turns around. He does, <laughs> he's a little tummy. He kicks him right in the little tummy. Uh, and he does a stone cold stunner. Shawn Michaels pops up and he does no fewer than eight and a half laps around the ring while, <laughs> while stumbling before standing straight as an arrow and falling flat back. Amazing. Well, and then it's Steve Wise's for all, right? We're up in that corner start catching chugging, them chugging some beers Steve Weisers. Uh, well then if we're all chugging beers in the corner hal bring us home people of the world your winner from victoria texas the rattlesnake stone cold steve austin there you go Asked he's the best answered the money don't lie people 
the money is don't the money. lie. It is the and money. I get a hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's so <laughs> nice having my whole pod, almost my whole podcast family. I have to get Megan Symphony in here sometime and find a reason for all of us to talk <laughs> about it. something. Have a Mega reason. show. Thing. Megan Mike but, musicals? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can listen to the three of us talk wrestling on Tights and Fights every week and more. What, tell everybody more, Lindsay and Danielle, where they can find you. Danielle, give us the rest of the deets. Oh, yeah, you can find me, Danielle Radford, uh, in most of my socials. I usually plug anything I'm doing. If you like the role play stuff, I have some, you can find me doing some TTRPG stuff. I've done stuff with Dimension 20. I've also, you can see me on Dropout, especially coming out soon. I'm going to be on an upcoming episode of I'm Actually. Uh, I think that's about it. Everything I I put on my socials, and uh, unless it sucks, I don't want anyone to see it, and then I never talk about it. <laughs> Lindsay, uh, despite everything you've heard here today, I am a romance novelist. By <laughs> 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 uh, it sounds even silly to me. I write rom coms <laughs> books for a living, so um, you could check out my books uh, from your library, from your bookstore, audiobooks, wherever you feel like it. Um, and yeah, same. I'm mostly on Instagram these days. Feels like a safer space friends come find me mm-hmm. at Lindsay kelk i'm there probably talking to danielle about cats steve austin come hang cats. out I, poncho i is mean a star he's a star i believe you star. well thank you for being here this topic is closed it was such a delight to hang out with the maximum fun pod not the like direct podcast family you know what i mean like there's a lot of shows on max but it's nice to like this is a family right here, and I, I love seeing Hal and the way that you two work with Hal and give Hal grief as much as uh, <laughs> Hal grief. It's delightful. Uh, we take that responsibility very seriously, and we appreciate your Amen. Your helping us out with that, too. I'm Thank you for splitting 50-50 custody with Hal. <laughs> yeah. or, sorry, Thank sorry, you. not 50-50, yeah. because Megan's also got custody. So thank you That's for split custody. Tomorrow, we're taping Tights and Fights, so we'll be taking him back. Oh, okay, <laughs> great, great. I've got a thing tomorrow, so can you hold him like an extra day? I promise I'll be back. Back though the next morning, though. No. Oh, that's fine. Well, we you back for ice Is that okay? Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. I, hey, buddy, buddy, yeah. we will yeah. totally get ice cream on Friday. Yeah, I you said promise. We get ice cream. You said. I promise we'll you get ice Thursday. cream on Friday. You said Thursday we get ice cream. <laughs> This topic is closed, but there are many more topics to discuss. So please reach out to us via email at we got this podcast at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook at the greatest group ever online. Facebook.com slash group slash we got this podcast. You can also now find us on Instagram at we got this show and on TikTok at we got this podcast. Check us out there. By the way, Max Fun Drive starts next week. So when you're clicking those buttons for shows you listen to, You'll have certainly started to listen to Tights and Fights by then. You can click the box for our show and for our show. So we got this with Mark and Hal and Tights and Fights, both well worthy of your support. Max Fun Drive means it's time for another trivia showdown. So join us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash we got this podcast for our first trivia showdown of the Max Fun Drive. That is this coming Monday night, March 18th at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you to producer Ken Plume, researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Uri Kelman, and QA engineer Jen Alba. And thanks, of course, to our musicians, Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman, for our score and theme song, respectively. And thanks to you, the people of the world, for giving us week in and week out. And I say this all the time, and I mean this every time I say it. You are giving us the opportunity to sit down and talk about things that we care about with people that we care about. And nothing could make me happier or more grateful than your support in doing that, whether or not you become a member just for listening to us and creating that space on Facebook to have the most fun arguments on the internet. We can't thank you enough for that. And on behalf of everybody, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. For Hal Lublin, I'm Mark Gagliardi. For Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. And don't worry, everybody. We got this. We got this. Maximum Fun, a worker-owned network of artist-owned shows supported directly by you.